Good evening. Welcome to Green Watch, a locally produced progressive political and social affairs program. I'm your host, Brian Harrison. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the conditions on Texas's death row. Many in the international community and here inside the United States have called how Texas treats its death, its death row inmates amounts to torture. We're going to be talking to a group that is working hard right now to improve conditions and remove torture from Texas prisons. With us to talk about this tonight is Angie Agapitas. She is a death penalty abolition activist. Also joining us tonight is Regina Guidry. She is a, a death penalty abolitionist as well, and she is also wife of a current death row inmate. And also we are joined by a familiar face, Gloria Ruback, who is um, a death penalty abolitionist with the Texas Death Penalty Abolition Movement. This is the group that uh, is heading up the charge to improve conditions on death row. Uh, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Gloria, let's start with you. Tell us about the Texas Death Penalty Abolition Movement. Well, we've been around for, I don't know, 15 or more years, I guess. And uh, we're a very activist organization. And we kind of have, we have two goals. One is to abolish the death penalty and in the meantime, support the rights of the men and women on death row to live under humane conditions. And of course, that's our topic tonight because they're not humane. Uh, but uh, so those are our two goals, the conditions and abolishing the death penalty. Yeah, can I ask you a question? Why use the word abolition whenever we talk about ending the death penalty? Because each state in the United States has their own criminal laws. Not all the states have the death penalty. I think there's, what is it, 34 now? Or? Yeah, something. So, and each state has different laws. But those laws have to be abolished so that we can get rid of it. So, I mean, some people use the word repeal. They think it sounds a little more appealing, maybe. Uh, we call ourselves the abolition movement because we use the word abolition deliberately because we feel like that the death penalty is, quite frankly, a continuation of lynchings that took place over 100 years ago, but now they're legal. We don't, you know, hang people in the courthouse square anymore and burn crosses, usually. But we lynch people legally in Huntsville. We execute them. R Regina, how um, you have a family member on death row. How did yes. you get involved with the abolition movement? Um, I got involved actually through a friend of mine um, who attended the same university as I did, who happened to be from a hometown. And he was visiting somebody on death row while he still lived in Germany. And he just introduced us. And so that was somebody that became a friend of mine. And I, I supported him and became his friend all the way until his execution, which I witnessed. And it just, I always, I grew up having kind of a strong sense of be social justice the way that I was raised. Growing up in Europe, we don't believe in the death penalty. And so it's just something where I find, found my calling as far as finding a purpose in life to do something that's more important than myself. Okay. Um, I want to turn now to the Texas death penalty abolition movement's uh, recent push to improve conditions on death row. Gloria, I want to go to you first. Um, why should people watching right now be concerned about how Texas treats its death row inmates? Well, the main reason, I, I think, is because it's absolutely inhumane. Uh, and, and there's a little history, Brian, because in, up until 1999 or 2000, the men on death row, and it's particularly the men that we're talking about, there are 10 women on death row, their conditions are a little better. Uh, not great, but they're not quite as repressive. But up until uh, they moved death row from the Ellis unit in Huntsville to the Polonsky unit, 40 miles east of there in Livingston, the men on death row who were good, uh, had a good disciplinary record, could participate in a work program. They actually made prisoner uh, guards uniforms in a sewing shop type thing. So they worked with scissors and sewing machines and this and that. And their cell doors were open during the day. so. That, after work, they could go to the day room, they could go out to the yard and, I guess, play basketball, uh, watch TV in the day room, things like that. That changed so dramatically when they moved them to the Polonsky unit. And that unit is what is known as a supermax or super seg or some states call them special housing units. Um, 
It's interesting, when Anthony Graves was just released from death row and they asked him about it to describe death row, he said hell. Right, and, and it, it has, it's changed in the last 10 years. As you said, they moved inmates from the Ellis unit near Huntsville, where a lot of people still think death row is, right. to where it currently is in Livingston. Uh -huh. um, R Regina, can you tell us a little bit about what it is like on a day-to-day -day level to be on Texas's death row? <laughs> I... I wish I could explain to you in detail. At the same time, I'm glad I, I can't. I think only you can understand if you're if you're actually there or somebody who was there, like like Anthony Graves, who just came from there. He can relate to it. He can explain it because he was there. But I can't. I can't tell you for sure. There's a lot of things that my husband Howard Gidry, he purposely shields me and protects me from. But it's just you basically spend the day in your cell. I think six by eight or whatever dimensions, or eight by ten. Six by, six 20, by, six by ten. Twenty-three hours you spend in the cell. You have an hour for recreation, which doesn't mean that you go outside and let your feet t touch the grass. You're on a conc concrete floor and you have walls around you. So you're basically still not free out there. And you have an hour where you can recreate or in the day room inside. By yourself. You don't really have any contact with anybody else. You, you're not able to touch somebody else or give them a hug and basically... You do the best not to lose your mind by occupying yourself. And if you're lucky and blessed, you have family members and friends that support you, they visit you. But there are a lot of people that don't have it. They don't have people writing them or visiting them. And so a lot of people definitely lose their minds, literally, because, I mean, it's just such deprivation. So we will give you our website where you can contact us and get kind of a summary of what the conditions are and what you can do and a list of people to call. You can call your representatives, you can call the prison at the Polanski unit and we can provide you with that information. Um, and like Gloria said, it always helps to get in touch if you're interested in writing someone, you know, get a better understanding of somebody over there goes through if you feel inclined to do that. But definitely going through the different channels because there are organizations out there like the office of the ombudsman and there's there's people that control what the prison does i mean their organization so um if you want to connect with our organization you know we can further discuss those suggestions what you can do and the channels to go through but i think the main thing is if you do care and you feel like we're connected as human beings as as there is there, there are different means to do something. Everything is not for everybody, but as long as you do something, uh, whether you write someone, you make some phone calls, I mean, it, it's combined forces that oftentimes, you know, bring about a change. Gloria, is this going to be an easy fight? Is this going to be no. something? No. Not easy at all. I mean, fighting the death penalty isn't easy. <laughs> but, you know, after they moved the men to the Polanski unit and they'd been there, really only a few months, we started immediately getting letters about the isolation. And that's, what, uh, that's the sentence that has always stuck in my mind is, and I can't remember who wrote us, but he said, we were sentenced to death, not torture. The state can kill us, that's the law, but there's no law that says they can torture us. Please help us. Forget, he even said, forget about fighting the death penalty, fight this torture. I bought a, a, a USA Today is the cheapest newspaper that you can get a subscription to, and I bought one for somebody. He said, I'm so glad you sent me this. I didn't know if the world still existed. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what was going on in the world. It could have all been blown to bits, and I wouldn't have known, because I'm here surrounded by four white walls. So we meet on the first Tuesday of every month and, and we encourage people to join us. We'll be at the Pan-African Festival on Saturday the 28th of May out at Shape Center. We do a lot of different things and they're, like Regina said, if, if you could even just go to your church and talk to people about something, mm -hmm. if that's the most you could do, that would be great. If you're a student, invite us to come talk to one of your classes. Um, there's a role for everybody. Regina, this is going to have to be the last word. What would you want people to understand about death row? We have about half a minute. <laughs> um, the, under death row, you find human beings, and we're all connected as one. And everybody up there is not a brutal serial killer. 
I've met some very intelligent, wonderful people that ended up there. Um, some of them who are innocent, and it's, it's, it's just, we have to all ask ourselves individually, how do we fit in in society? How do we want to represent ourselves as a part of greater society? And, and what does it tell about us? And so death row, in, in, in this country, that's the way that we choose to punish individuals, but in other countries, they see it differently. So it's, it's a perspective. We have been talking with Regina Guidry, Gloria Ruback, and Angie Agapetis. We have been talking, they are death penalty abolitionists with the Texas Death Penalty Abolition Movement. We've been talking about how to improve conditions on death row. For everyone here at Greenwatch, this is your world. Take care of it.